Welcome back for the latest edition of NC Sports Weekly News with top water sports from around the globe. And then there were six. America's Cup 35 team meet the press in London as the Defender and the Challengers map out the future waypoints of the greatest sailing show on earth. Rev up the engines, a Class 1, V1, and Aqua Bike Racing shake up the Movida in Ibiza for the UIM Mediterranean GP. A dream come true for ocean sailing legend Loïc Peron, now at the Route de Rome on Maxi Trimaran Van Populaire. Full story with senior correspondent Sébastien Destremont. In the briefs. September 21st of Save the Date for Bart's Bash. Everyone will be there, and you can too. Join the biggest regatta of all times with Monaco Channel and help raise funds for the Andrew Simpson Sailing Foundation charity at www.bartsbash.co.uk. It's official. Team Vestas will be the seventh brand new VOR65 on the start line of the Volvo Ocean Race this October 4th. Australian veteran pro Chris Nicholson is back in the race. Brazil's Jesse Mendes wins the ASP Prime Santa Azores Pro and takes the lead in the Portuguese Wave Series. NC Sports plunge into the action. With his first press conference in London last Tuesday, the games are officially open for America's Cup 35. On call, the defender with Oracle Racing's Jimmy Spithill and Five confirmed the challenger. Dean Barker for Emirates Team New Zealand, Max Sirena of Luna Rossa, Nathan Outridge for Artemis Racing, Rancama for Team France, and of course Ben Ainsley on BAR Team. Following his decisive role in the USA's victory in San Francisco, the greatest comeback in sports history, Ben Ainsley dutifully opened the chat, noting that a successful new British challenge will likely require a similar effort. And everything that goes with sailing is The upcoming edition is also creating a real pro sailor transfer market with little in national allegiance which according to Dean Barker is a natural and welcome evolution of the sport into professionalism. Crew preparation from here to the big event in 2017 on the new AC-62s was also a big topic, especially when it comes to foiling practice. With all teams participating in a variety of different circuits as the AC World Series gears up for 2015. Maxa Sirena disclosed that foiling is in fact being tested and considered for the 45s as prepped to the AC-62 and could very well be in place by next year. Perhaps the biggest novelty in the America's Cup notoriously complex a setup is the disappearance of the challenger of record. Here too, prompted by Jimmy Spithill, the Luna Rosa skipper noted that the sport needs to move forward, announcing the need for a challenger committee now in the works. In closing remarks, Jimmy Spithill argued that though still too early to tell, Team New Zealand remain the likely favorites simply because of their history and time spent together. Yet given the right preparation and development, he added the vast talent pool of these challengers to the next America's Cup number 35 easily turned the tide into any direction. The UIM's Mediterranean Grand Prix descended on Ibiza over the weekend and revved up the local Movida as the Class 1, V1 and Aqua Bike circuits hit the Spanish island for some high octane coastal racing around the boys. This was a new kind of event as pilots from both powerboat classes agreed to race side by side for the very first time, with Class 1 catamaran staking the turns on the outside course marks and the V1 monohulls on the inside. The World Championship format remained the same with pole position runs followed by two straight races. 
Mounting the latest high-tech power plants, these boats generate between 800 to 1,000 HP to sustain average speeds of over 65 to 75 knots. And the result was a spectacular three-day show for all the late summer beachgoers. In Class 1, World Championship leader of victory team Arifa Zafine this time, with Nadir bin Hindi, had the perfect weekend with three straight wins. Today our plan to not push hard because uh, just I want to finish the race with uh, the first uh, position. Uh, then the plan, everything is work uh, very well. Uh, but I feel sorry to Abu Dhabi team because he flipped in first time, in first turn. Uh, sure, I am happy to win the race. In the V1 fleet, uh, Team Chaudron instead gradually climbed up the leaderboard and then secured the event title with a fabulous win in race two. Yeah, we are extremely happy today because this morning we, we are sixth in the pole position. We have a little problem in the engines. So we, we, we're going out sixth place. We managed to go in the second lap, the first one. We, re, we restart the race and we were first again. So we, we lead the, the race uh, totally. So we are very happy, we have uh, little problems in the whole weekend, so now we win, uh, we are happy. Yeah? Aquabike fans also got a piece of the action in Ibiza as French writer Teddy Pons and the USA's Chris McLuggage also put on a perfect performance, taking both heats over the weekend and winning their respective Mediterranean Grand Prix titles in the runabout and ski divisions. Sandra Fernandez Rodriguez, uh, Spain's outsider in the ladies' division, found a special inspiration in Ibiza. First, she nailed a key victory in Heat 1, and then went on to close the file with a second place in Heat 2. Brothers Rock and Mac Florianchich once again stole the show, and the top podium positions for the freestyle. NC Sports brings you the full take on this UIM Mediterranean GP in San Ibiza in the next edition of Top Story, premiering this Saturday only on Monocle Channel. Loic Perron gets the nod for the upcoming Rugby Rome. You're watching the Selling Updates Desktop News. Welcome to the office. The famous French sailor let go of his project to sell the Rue de Rome on his vintage yellow trimaran to embark on Banque Populaire 7. Racing the Rue de Rome on a large multi-hole like this one was not even an option. It was not even a dream. Severely injured during a car washing accident, the skipper Armel Leclerc is forced to forfeit the Rue de Rome. The current situation is not easy to handle. Until the route to Rome is over, I'll basically have my heart in my mouth. The rum in the multi category was a dream, and to be among the favorites, even better. Now there will be other challenges, and I have to let that one go. The handover takes place in Lorient. The freelancer Loic Perron will take the helm of the giant trimaran just for this one race. Obligations, and I have some obligations to educate myself. This boat is very physical, and I'm not ready yet, but it's doable. Although Loic was very interested to take on the challenge, he took some time to think about it before saying yes. Firstly, it's an honor to be asked, uh, but then in addition, there's full reflection. Well, actually, it took me longer than a full night to weigh the pros and the cons of taking such a massive challenge. Armel will be supporting Loic's preparation all the way to the Rue de Rums starting from Saint-Malo early November. That's what I told the team, Bank Populaire and Loïc. I will do anything to help them out, for the boat and Loïc to be as well prepared as possible for them to arrive in Pointe au Pito as winners. That was the goal we had set. Loïc is fully aware of the enormity of the challenge ahead of him. 
the responsibilities on his shoulders are now massive. Personally, it was very risky to accept this type of situation. This is the boat and the guy who were supposed to win the event. Will I be able to do well enough? I just wonder. Mark the calendar, save the date. This September 21st, it's Bart's Bash. And you too can join this global sailing race and fundraising event for the Andrew Simpson Sailing Foundation that aims at breaking the Guinness World Record as the largest sailing race in 24 hours over multiple venues. So far, 5,745 sailors in 680 global venues have already raised over 33,000 British pounds. And this is one regatta you do not want to miss. Simply go to www.bartsbash.co.uk, check out the program, find a racing location near you, and donate. Help transform the lives of young people through sailing, just as Bart would have wanted. British sailor and Olympic gold medalist Andrew Bart Simpson lost his life while training when the AC-72 Artemis capsized and crashed in San Francisco Bay in May of 2013. He was part of an elite group of UK sailors that included lifetime friends Ben Ainsley and Ian Percy, among many others. His legacy will never be forgotten. Nautical Channel is a very proud sponsor of Bart's Bash and will offer its global subscribers an exclusive half-hour special with behind-the-scenes features, interviews, and top action from the water. Remember, you can donate at www.bartsbash.co.uk. Denmark, one of the world's greatest sailing nations, is now the last official team entry at the upcoming Volvo Ocean Race, confirming the dockside chatter on a possible seventh brand new VOR65, almost ready for the legendary race. Sponsored by the world's leading wind energy producers, a Team Vestas wind will be captained by veteran Chris Nicholson. That's big news. Now on his fifth VOR tour, Nico finished second at the last edition on Camper with Emirates Team New Zealand. He is a six-time world champion in the 49er and 505 classes and has represented Australia at the Olympics in both Sydney and Athens. With the boat expected on the water just days before the next October 4th start in Spain's Alicante and the serious preparation gap to fill, this is a very demanding challenge even for this Aussie pro. The new VOR 65 one designs by Far Yachts have successfully passed the sea test at the last round Britain and Ireland race and to top it off also set new speed records. With an identical boat, reliability may not be the main issue, but fewer miles under the key when compared to the rest of the fleet will definitely be a factor. And the crew aims at a mix of experience and youthful energy to get the job done. It all came down to a 35-minute final smack in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean between Jesse Mendes and Francis John Duru at the ASP Prime Sata Azores Pro. The Brazilian kept on the pressure from the get-go and consistently scored ahead of the Frenchman to take the event and get on top of the Portuguese Wave Series leaderboard. I just want to let everyone know back at home in Brazil, my mom, my dad, my brothers, cousin, my whole family, that I'm very happy with this victory here in Portugal and I hope to continue this way. It's all good for Duru that with this second place here in the Azores now leads in the European qualifying series. Just ahead of Italian prodigy Leonardo Fioravanti, 16 years old and battling it out with the big boys. That will be decided at the final event in Geis Geis in mid-October.
More NC Sports coming your way at full throttle with the complete coverage of the Mediterranean GP. Class 1, V1, aqua bike racing and freestyle. Join the Movida in Ibiza with top stories. Premiering this Saturday at 5 p.m. Only on Nautical Channel. Plunge into the action with NC Sports.